Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wealthy Sailor. Today's going to be a little bit of a short video, which I feel bad for saying because I say that actually at the beginning of the video, so if it runs longer, I apologize. But in planning for the video, I think it's going to be short. So for those of you who don't know what the channel is about, I'm the Wealthy Sailor John, and this is a video about finances, business, stuff like that. And I also go out on tangents every now and then. And sprinkled in the middle of that, I also share with you how I'm doing with my personal financial goals. Okay, so today's video comes to you from inspiration from my dear friend we'll call Fred. No Fun Fred, we'll call him. So No Fun Fred and I were talking today, and he felt the need to point out to me that money does not buy happiness. And I agree with this. And I think it's important to emphasize that although I'm trying to save a lot and I'm trying to invest and do all that stuff, and I encourage all of you to also save, invest, budget, stuff like that, money does not buy happiness. But I also don't think you should undervalue how important money is. Unfortunately, just the nature of nature is that you need things. Everybody needs things. You need food, you need shelter, you need water. To a lesser extent, or maybe to a greater extent, you need companionship. We all need things. Now, in the old days, in the barter system, or even prior to that, before you know, uh, mass civilizations came together in order to make economic systems, you would need to take care of all that yourself. You'd have to find your own shelter, you'd have to build, you'd have to get your own food, you'd have to get your own water, you'd have to take care of your own hygiene, all that stuff. That was all on you. Now we live in a society where we're all trading for these things, which is actually better. And if you watched my video on production costs, then you should know that. In fact, if you haven't watched my video, why don't you just go back to the very beginning of all my videos and you just watch them all end to end. Make sure you give each one of them a like and make sure you subscribe and share all of them and stuff uh, because I want to get this uh, channel monetized because um, at this point with me talking trash about expert options in every single video, which I'm starting to do because I'm tired of seeing their commercials. So expert options is a dumpster fire. Don't put your money with them. Um, I'm never going to make any money off this channel unless I get monetized because no sponsor is going to want to sponsor any of these videos. So please go back and watch my back catalog. I guarantee you, you'll learn something. If you want, put on a playlist, press play, mute it, and walk away from your computer. I don't care. Although the information is actually pretty good and I do think it can help a lot of people. So back to the topic. So that's what we used to do. We used to all just do our own thing. Now we have a society where it's more productive for one person to become a master at making food, another person to become a master at making shelter, and then we trade services and goods to each other. And then we currently we use an intermediary of money in order to do this. The thing is that you might not need money, and money can't buy happiness, but money does buy you the things you need to survive, the things your family needs to survive. So it's not like you should I don't feel like the best lesson is to teach people like, oh, money doesn't matter, because it most certainly does. Now, money does not buy happiness in the sense that if you're a depressed person, giving them a load of money will not help that. But now you're getting into a separate issue. You're getting into actually people that are depressed, which, to be fair, nothing will help them except for the treatment for that particular problem they have. On top of that, you hear a lot of stories about people who, um, you know, win the lottery and then bad stuff happens to them. It's like, yeah, okay, but one, that is far from the majority of lottery winners. In fact, most of the people that win the lottery, because keep in mind, somebody wins the lottery like every week, they win millions of dollars. Well, multiple people every week wins millions of dollars. And you only hear about a small percentage of them actually going down. It's not the lottery that's the problem. The problem is, in this case, is that, to be honest, most people who play the lottery regularly aren't people that are great with money. Like, it's just not... It's just not the way it works. Like, people who are good with money, I use myself as an example. I'm at least moderately good with money. I don't play the lottery. You know why? Because statistically, I'm not going to win anything. And if I spend $5 a week, you know, that's 20 bucks a month, which if anybody's watched that video, that's $360 by retirement time. That $20 is worth $360. So it's better just to, you know, invest it and let it save that way rather than play the lottery. So it's no surprise when people who play lottery aren't really great with money and then they win the lottery and they're still not great with money. So that's not really an issue. You know, the depression and money had nothing to do with that case. It's a lack of education, which again is why I'm making the videos. So money can't buy happiness. 
but it buys you the staples of life. It buys you food, it buys you shelter, it buys you medicine for sick, it takes care of your kids. Having enough money to get by that is different than having a lot of money, or at least in most cases. The reason I want a lot of money isn't because I don't want to just get by. I want to make sure that my kids are set up for a while. Like I'm not saying I want to give them millions of dollars so they're trust fund babies or whatever, but I do want to make sure that if an emergency happens, we have the money to uh, get through it together as a family. Also, I want to make sure my retirement is set up and good because, I mean, working till the day I die, I guess that could make you happy, but no one else can make me happy. Being 60 and driving around in a jet ski. I mean, I'd probably break a hip, but it sounds fun to me. You know, getting drunk off mo mojitos on some tropical island, doing donuts in a jet ski sounds kind of awesome. Going parasailing with my fiance sounds kind of awesome. Or what we're actually realistically looking forward to is being able to take a day off work and drive to wherever we want, stay there however we want and see whatever we want to see. You know, I have never been to any of the U.S. national parks. I think there's like 10 or 12 of them. And I've never been to any of them. I would like to go see national parks. I would like to go see the Grand Canyon. You know, I lived in Florida for five years and I've never been to Miami or the Florida Keys because I was always working with the military and stuff like that. People tend to think that people who prioritize money are unhappy or that their priorities are incorrect. And although that can be the case, I think it's rarely the case. Because in my opinion, people who have their priorities all mixed up don't stick to a five-year financial plan where they're saving and investing, they're buying property or whatever they're doing. That's something that people do when they want something and they're highly motivated to get it. Um, being interested in making money and taking care of your family I don't think is a sign of bad priorities. I actually think it's a big sign of maturity. Now, with anything, there's exceptions like there are greedy people out there who just want money 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 and they want power but i tend to think that's a different symptom because uh th there's narcissists and they just you know want power and everything and i think money's just the avenue they use in order to get that now before i finish up this video i want to point out one thing i have noticed and this is my personal experience with some of my close friends i love all my friends but i have noticed that some of them have this self uh, fulfilling prophecy so in order for me to be happy it's not just money like I have a very careful life plan that I'm executing and knowing that I'm setting goals and achieving them makes me happy like that adds joy to me. every time I go to the gym when I'm eating well when I'm sleeping right when I'm reading the books I want to read or watching documentaries when I want to read when I'm coming up with my financial plans and I'm executing all these things even though I'm busy I enjoy it. Like I wake up every day, I'm like, you know what? I'm slightly a better person than I was yesterday. Now, money isn't the only factor in there, but it is a factor in a much larger plan. Um, I know some of my friends uh, tend to get into this like spiral where they want to they they want to be happy, but they're stressed out about money. They're stressed out about money, which causes them to be less happy. And because the this revolving circle. There's other things sprinkled in there. Like, I mean, if you're stressed about money and you're unhappy, then you're probably not gonna eat right. You're probably not gonna sleep right. You're probably not gonna work out regularly or be active. You know, to a lesser extent, these things can actually, you know, be a be a problem with like family life back home. And even to maybe even a greater extent, these things affect like family, you know? Like if, if you're coming home from work every day and you're angry about work and at home you're stressed about money, um, and you know, you're depressed in, in the middle there, like you're not gonna be a very pleasant person for your family to be around. And that's a problem. And the only solution I can think of is, is start fixing. I'm like, you don't have to start with money, but like start fixing the cycle. Instead of being in this like stagnant, you know, circle like this, start like a slow upward trend, you know, just start, you're still gonna be depressed, fine, but do something to start getting yourself up and lifting yourself up. I know that is so much easier said than done. I get that. I'm not trying to tell anybody like, oh yeah. It's like when people are, are depressed and people are like, oh, why don't you just try to be happy more? It's like, oh, oh, Jesus, I have not thought of, thank you. You just saved my life. I will try to be happy more. God, I, I wish I would have thought of that, you know, two years ago when crippling depression set in. But I do think that uh, it's a small step in the right direction if you can at least start thinking about it. You don't even need to execute anything. Just figure out this is what I want to do.
Well, anyway, guys, thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. This video was brought to you by No Fun Fred. And me and him talk a lot. And I have a few notes of different videos I want to make involving No Fun Fred. But, um, yeah, we're just... Um, I hope you enjoyed the video because I enjoyed making it. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching and keep saving.